I am an ethnically Korean person and an American citizen. My father is from Wonsan, North Korea, and my mother is from Busan, South Korea. I was born in Seoul, and every single aspect of those geographical truths has formed me, and I do not reject them. When I was 19 years old, I attended a lecture about the Korean Japanese people, in which I heard a very terrible story about a little Korean boy being bullied and being motivated to kill himself by his peers. And that story was burned into my brain, and I really couldn't forget it. That story motivated me to write this novel. I wanted to write the history that was wrong. Annyeonghaseyo, uh, Im Minjin입니다. I wrote Pachinko and uh, Free Food for Millionaires, and it's an honor to be here. How do you say honor again in Korean? 영광입니다. 영광입니다. 진짜 영광입니다. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> ...2017年,美国에서出版的小说《パチンコ》は、世界中の家族4人の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家族の家
So I remember when I was seven, my parents said we were going to go to America. I did not know what that meant. <laughs> but I remember thinking that it was going to be like in a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. So like a Cinderella story. So I read all these picture books about like princesses and castles and balls. And then I went to JFK and everybody looks exactly the same as in Seoul, but not Korean. I was so disappointed. So many immigrants in Queens. I think the most number of languages that are spoken in all the world is in Queens. We were living in Elmhurst initially. It was such a difference between Seogyodong, where I grew up. And I remember one time I woke up and I went to the bathroom. I was very little and I started screaming because there was a mouse in the bathtub. I didn't understand why we were in America. And of course, later on, I understood. My father wanted to have a peaceful existence because he came from North Korea, from Wonsan, and he came when he was 16. And he was always afraid, oh, if there's another war, I could lose my entire family again. So he didn't want us to feel what he felt when he was 16. So he thought, oh, maybe America is safer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Their one Tessian wounds on him, the Hamjang, the wounds on Kurunaga, Kogiso, Hebong de Wu, Il Sauti to Sarajo, Iname Oginan, Tunguik, Osim Samyon de Osseo, Osim de Ogajo, Osim Samyon de Shijon de Jo. 그 흥남부도 그 배에 떠나는 거 보셨죠? 우리는 원산에서 떠났습니다. 어머니가 얘가 막내니까 16살 때도 인명군에 붙들어 간단 말이야. 그러니까 얘까지만 데리고 가면은 우리 집에 군대 갈 사람 없으니까 얘 데려가라. 그래서 내가 살 필요는 한 거예요. 그리고 이렇게 오래 있었어도 몰랐죠. 자기 고향에서 부모 밑에 있었으면 굉장히 대우를 받고 잘 했을 사람인데 비난민이잖아. 그러니까 와가지고 고생을 많이 한것 같아. 내가 여기 온 것이 76년도에 왔는데 에, 그 당시에 아시겠지만 곧 올람이 폐망을 해가지고 다음은 한국이 전쟁할 것이 불안했어요. 그래서 내가 그 유교에 하도 고생을 해서 그 당시 우리 꼬미들 셋을 데리고 저걸 데리고 어떻게 피난을 가느냐 그 걱정이 되더라고. 전쟁이 두려웠던 이민진의 아버지는 맨해튼 32번가에서 새로운 삶을 꾸렸다. 처음엔 작은 신문 가판대를, 그 다음엔 귀금속 도매 상점을 운영했다. 대개 한인 이민자들이 그러하듯 헌신적으로 일했다. 그래서 아침에 
7시에 문 열어서 저녁 7시에 문 열어서 12시간씩 집사람 원하고 만 20년 주 원래 홀세를 했기 때문에 제 셋을 아무 걱정 없이 공부시켰죠. I mean, New York was a much more dangerous place than it is now. And when my parents had a business, they were always in danger. So I remember always waiting for them to come home. Like, will they come home? At what time will they come home? And I remember waiting, looking out the window, thinking, oh, are they going to come home soon? So I remember that very clearly. Minjin은 조용하고 수줍음이 많았지만. 부모의 기대를 저버리지 않는 영민한 아이였다. 뉴욕의 수제들이 모이는 과학고등학교를 졸업하고 예일대에 진학했다. 민지는 책을 좋아하고 호기심이 많은 학생이었다. 누구나 꿈꾸는 엘리트 과정을 밟았지만 세상의 불공정함도 경험했다. People think if you go to a fancy college, your life will be perfect. I was surprised by some of the elitism of my classmates. I was really surprised and kind of hurt by it. Because I've heard terrible comments being made just because my parents had, um, at that point, we were middle class. We weren't poor anymore. And also, not all the professors were fair. Some of my professors were really racist. And they didn't think very much about Korean people. And I had fights with some of my professors. When I was a teacher, I met a lot of my friends. We met in 1991. I went to this uh, fundraiser, and I was about to leave. And then all of a sudden, this woman came up to me out of nowhere and said, do you want to dance? And that was Minjin. I think her father, and to some degree her mother, you know, wanted to have their daughters marry someone of a Korean background. Both their mother and father are very affected by what Japan did, both personally and, you know, as a, as, as a culture and as a nation by what uh, Japan did. But 어머니가 진짜 감동이었어요. One, here, you're crying, you're dead. Two, three. Your dad has to look at me. Now you have to look at see, Chris's photograph. You're crying like that. Like that. <웃음> One, two, three. 우리 민희는 내가 셋 중에서 참 끈기 있습니다. 그건 내가 인정하죠. 그러니까 그 장편 소설을 쓰는 거예요. 요새 누가 장편을 긋습니까? 안 써요. 근데 저놈은 지 성적이 그러니까 그것이 한다. 어릴 때부터 책만 보는 거야. 고향에서 요만할 때부터 책. 근데 저놈 자식이 뭐 하려고 저런 거 했더만 결국은 그 법대 나오는데도 법은 안 하고 그저 글 쓰는만. 
the palace is for the people. And I think that is such a beautiful idea. So this is my palace. So I always feel like I owe so many things to public libraries because they allowed me to have a world-class education. Even though I don't know anybody, I'm not important, they let an immigrant girl come to a library and to borrow books and to study. It's astonishing. Reading makes me feel less lonely because I have so many questions about life. And then one of the things that I can say is that every author of every book, every journal, every essay, every news article, they've raised questions that I've raised. And the ones who are published, the ones we keep reading, they've asked eternal questions. And knowing that that person asked that question, the question that I had in my heart, I always think, oh, I'm not so abnormal.첫 장편 소설이 나오기까지는 11년이 걸렸다. 2007년 출간한 100만 장자를 위한 공짜 음식은 1990년대 뉴욕을 배경으로 한인 이민 2세대 여성의 욕망과 상처를 그리고 있다. 작가 이민진의 한국인 3부작 그첫 번째 소설이다. 이민지는 19세기 서양 고전 문학에 심취했고 그 토양 위에서 글쓰기를 탐구했다. 읽고 또 읽고 고쳐쓰기를 끈질기게 반복하며 문장을 붙들었다. 두 번째 장편 소설이 나오기까지 다시 10년이 걸렸다. 소설 파친코는 곧 화제가 됐다. 미국에서 가장 영향력 있는 뉴욕 타임스 베스트셀러 목록에 올랐다. 미국 주류 사회가 알지 못했던 제일 한국인의 강렬한 서사에 대중과 평단의 찬사가 쏟아졌다. 이제 마스터피스 Editors don't say that. You can't be too hyperbolic. She said, it's a masterpiece. And uh, that got my attention and uh, got everyone's attention. I was blown away by Pachinko. Uh, I did not know the story. Um, I was blown away by how real every detail and every situation was. My first impression is that it's just a really good novel. It's a great story. It's a really good Well, incredibly well written. It's so absorbing. She knows she has really researched this period. 
She has talked to people who went through this experience. Definitely. Yangdo Busan. History has failed us, but no matter. At the turn of the century, an aging fisherman and his wife decided to take in lodgers for extra money. Both were born and raised in the fishing village of Yangdo, a five mile wide islet beside the port city of Busan. In their long marriage, the wife gave birth to three sons, but only Huni, the eldest and the weakest one, survived. Huni was born with a cleft palate and a twisted foot. He was, however, endowed with hefty shoulders, a squat build, and a golden complexion. From 1910, when Huni was 27 years old, Japan annexed Korea. The fisherman and his wife, thrifty and hardy peasants, refused to be distracted by the country's incompetent aristocrats and corrupt rulers who had lost their nation to thieves. Huni와 양진이 사랑으로 키운 외동딸 선자는 유부남의 아이를 임신하게 되지만 목사 이삭을 만나 결혼하고 일본 오사카로 떠난다. 오사카에서 선자는 조선인이자 여성으로서 온갖 차별과 멸시를 견디며 자신과 가족을 지켜낸다. 소설은 선자와 그녀의 아들 노아와 모자수 그리고 손자 솔로몬으로 이어지는 제일 한국인 가족 4대의 고난과 회복을 이야기한다. I started to do research. I started to talk to all these Koreans in Japan, and they always talked about the first generation and about all the difficult things they suffered through. まごい。ちょっか。ちょっか。はい。しまい。しまい。三、三世代ですよ。三世代。まあ、在日三世。はい。え、こんにちは、こんにちは。はい。もう、すごい。なんか、うちの主に、うちのね、ご生徒一番した
Sanja is a character that came from me living in Japan. I went to the markets and I read this one diary of a, a woman. They're, they're, they're describing how, because she's a mother and she has no childcare, so she put a rope around the child's waist so the child could move. And then in order to do changsa, but what choice does she have? And it made me so, um, it makes you angry, but at the same time you think, I really admire you. <laughs> right, they must be remembered and recorded yeah. and documented and admired. I think we have to admire their courage. Her first day of selling took place one week after Isak was jailed. After Sanja dropped off Isak's food at the jail, she wheeled a wooden cart holding a large clay jar of kimchi to the market. The open air market in Ikaino was a patchwork of modest retail shops, selling housewares, cloth, tatami mats, and electric goods. It had hosted a collection of hawkers like her, who peddled homemade scallion pancakes, rolled sushi, and soybean paste. You can't stink up our area, the older of the two cracker sellers said. Go to the other side. She pointed to the fish section. She kept walking until she couldn't see any more ajumas and ended up near the train station entrance where the live chickens were sold. She wiped her face with her sleeves, trying to remember what the best market ajumas would do back home. Kimchi. Delicious kimchi. Try this delicious kimchi and never make it at home again. She shouted. I guess I would say that, so I met her at her um, house in uh, Harlem. Uh, if you've been there, uh, you know that she has this study that she works in uh, upstairs and um, it's uh, full of books, files, and uh, she kind of showed me, that, well, this is the, these are the shelves for Pachinko, these are the shelves for Free Food Familiar. I was just kind of blown away, to be honest, uh, because I had actually, wondered a little bit about what took her so long. And, um, and so I was just really uh, um, being in there in, in her study, surrounded by her books and vials and talking to her. Um, that's what really came across to me and what I actually related to as a journalist. Ikaino는 만들어지지 말았어야 할 마을이라고 할수 있었다. 서로 어울리지 않는 초라한 집들이 들어서 있었고 판자집들은 하나같이 조잡한 자재로 지어져 있었다. 요셉의 집에서 그리 멀지 않은 현관 계단에서는 작은 아이가 똥을 누고 있었다. 여기는 돼지와 조선인만 살수 있는 곳이야. 일본인들은 우리한테 괜찮은 부동산을 빌려주지 않아.
파친코는 일본에서 가장 대중적인 성인용 게임이다. 쇠구슬이 핀 사이로 내려오며 내는 소리, 파친에서 유래됐다는 파친코. 한때 수백 조원 규모로 번성했던 파친코는 제일 한국인을 대표하는 산업이다. The reason why it's called pachinko is because every interview that I did, somebody in their family worked in the pachinko. And I said, why? Why does everybody work in pachinko? Even if the person didn't work in it, like an uncle worked in it, brother, a father, somebody. And they said, well, because the men, they wouldn't hire them. The laws were so unfair. And my novel is not about pachinko, the game, or the industry. The Korean Japanese have to play a very unfair game of life. When you gamble, you're almost always going to lose. And I realized that the Korean Japanese people were in a situation in which they're almost guaranteed to lose. 선자의 아들 모자 수는 파친코 사업으로 돈을 번다. 명문대를 다녔던 아들 노아마저도 결국은 파친코장에서 일을 하게 된다. 게임은 실패할 확률이 높지만 희망을 가지고 이길지 모른다는 터무니없는 일말의 가능성이라도 믿어보는 것이 인생이라고 작가는 말한다. 제일 한국인은 지문 날인을 강요받았고 외국인 등록증을 가지고 다녀야 했다. 취업도 제한됐다. 그들은 차별과 배제 속에 살았다. 그럼에도 저항했고 이겨냈고 살아남았다. 
And that just because you don't see us doesn't mean that we don't see ourselves. So I wanted to really have an attitude of defiance. The Metropolitan Museum is a very special place for me. It is a cultural home and an artistic home for anybody in New York City. Also, for anybody from around the world. It is an astonishing thing to be able to see Korean art at such a place. I think it's exciting. It's also beautiful. I also feel like I'm home. Whenever I'm with the art that Korean people have created, I feel like I am a very small part of this incredibly long history of civilization, culture, and art. As a person from diaspora, it's remarkable that a person like me can participate in that history. Thank you, thank you. I just gave you a Korean bow. Well, Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> You've got Dolly on is even bigger fan. She's a really? with her and her buddies. Do you have a phone? I do have a phone. Let me have, have a phone. Um, okay. What's her, what's her but, name? But her name is Talia, but you're going to sign a book for her. No, no, no. I'm actually going to make a video for her. Oh, my God. That's so sweet. So put your video on. Oh, boy. It's Talia. I'm with your dad. <laughs> and I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> and I hope so that you're really well. And thank you so much for reading the book. Thank you. There are not many books that have had universal love, of, oh. um, but Pachinko was one of them, thank which you. then posed on my wife's book group and my daughter um, has read it, so it really is an important book to um, our family. Wow. But is it really true? Screw all that. Is it really true that you worked at the book? God bless you. <laughs> this is how I am with my financial books. Then I realize it's a real master. Because I always tell them that my ulterior motive, my agenda, is to make everybody Korean. But if you're not Korean, and this is your first time, or maybe your second time, you read a Korean author, and all of a sudden you start to think, oh, they're just like me. Then I've changed you. In the same way, the first time I read a French writer or an Israeli writer, and I think, oh, they're just like me. They're just like my uncle, my cousin. And then all of a sudden I become Israeli or I become German, I become French, I become Brazilian, I become Nigerian. And then it becomes, and then I realize just how powerful it is to write a story. 이민지는 이야기의 힘을 믿는다. 그리고 그녀의 이야기는 세계인들의 호응을 얻고 있다. 사람들은 작가 이민진의 이야기를 기다리고 그녀는 언제나 기꺼이 목소리를 낸다. For men, illuminating themes of homeland and exile, of identity and belonging, and of love and forgiveness necessitates the coexistence of many often contradictory perspectives. And now, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Men Jin Lee. <laughs> wow. You guys, it's snowing outside. <laughs> Tamiko, thank you so much for that introduction. I'm so impressed. How can we bridge that gap between Japanese and Zaichi Koreans through fictional writing? I think it's an important question because I believe in reconciliation and reunion. With all my heart, I do. And I believe that the only way we can really think about other people is through empathy, and that's hard to do. But what I do think is evil, because I believe in the existence of evil, is dishonesty about one's history. 
So I think that if we are honest about history, then we can begin to consider reconciliation. Koreans began to arrive in America in the early 1900s through Hawaii. The absence and erasure of real Koreans and real Asians in media, culture, and history have profoundly tragic consequences for children and adults. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I'm Dick Samuels, and I'm the, I feel very, very grateful that she accepted the invitation to come here. We've been conspiring to make this happen for more than a year. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. As a fiction writer, I want to tell you something. I have an agenda. I'm trying to make you Korean. <laughs> through characters and plot and point of view and tone and setting, through recognition and reversal and catharsis, I am hoping that you will become Korean. Because you see, I know that this is what literature can do. Through literature, I have become Russian and French and Muslim and Israeli and Palestinian, French and Jamaican and Haitian. And through literature, I have been male and gay and transgender. I have been differently abled and ruling class. I have been dispossessed and disenfranchised and I have been imprisoned. And I have been orphaned. Through literature, we cross borders and we become united with the selves we did not know that we could be. And we become reunited with the selves that we have lost. My, and so my they had read the book, they were moved by the book, they identified with the characters in the book. She generously listened, um, and then they all sort of expressed some of the, some of the difficulties. It's a story for everyone um, uh, who has ever felt slighted, ignored, invisible, forgotten. And that's why the book was, was so magnificent. This novel recounts these generations upon generations of hardship um, and the striving that, that, uh, that these characters are doing. So it makes you feel for them uh, as, they, as they endure this suffering and ask, is it fair? Is this right? Is this all life should, uh, should offer? So it, it deals with these universal questions and universal emotions, um, which is why even though it's set in, a, you know, in Japan and in Korea, you know, territories uh, that many American readers don't know at all, it's absolutely universal. Absolutely universal. But still, several days ago, uh, when I say that she's really shown up for us as a community over the past couple of years, and for that, we thank her for being so visible and so vocal about what we are experiencing. So, Minjin, please. 이민진은 고난 속에서도 존엄과 회복력을 잃지 않는 사람들을 향해 이야기한다. I hear. I want to be loved. I want to be accepted. I want you to know me. So I ask you, please. Tell us who you are. Tell us your name. Tell us your story. Speak and be remembered. Min Jin Lee is an important figure in American literature and society because as a prominent Asian American leader, uh, she has helped to shine a light on the violent attacks and hate crimes that Asian American communities have faced. Whenever I sign a book, very often I will write, we are family, to people who are not Korean, people who are not biologically related to me. I'm trying to share as my philosophy that we are deeply connected and the world will never change unless we believe that we are deeply connected. Because if I care about you, then I can't just walk away. Numb is a terrible thing. <laughs> I would like the numb to become Uri. <laughs>
There are many, many things in the world that are so unfair. And every person has a heartbreak each day. Yet no matter what, I would love it if you could persist. Because I think that the struggle of life is actually quite beautiful. Jin.